All right, students, let's go over opening a ball of clay once it's centered and creating a cylinder and pull up our walls. So we've got our ball of clay centered. What do we do next? Well, using plenty of water, you want to take your thumbs and you want to wrap your hands around the clay and dip your thumbs into the middle of your ball of clay. A little bit more water here. I'm dipping down and I'm holding my hands firmly so I don't knock the clay off center. I go down and I stop a little bit before I get to the bottom, the wheel head. We don't want a hole in the bottom of our mug, do we? So I stop my wheel, I take my needle tool, I stab it through the bottom of my piece and I put my finger into the bottom, pull it out and I check the thickness of the floor of my pot. This is about a half an inch, that's pretty good, okay, for what we're looking for. If you go down too far, then you have to take your ball of clay off your wheel, wedge it, and reuse it. There's no quick fix for opening all the way down to the wheel head. I'm gonna start my wheel back up. Now that I've opened my ball of clay, I'm going to now spread the floor. Spreading the floor looks a lot like this. Left hand is on the left hand side. Three or two right fingers of your right hand are on the inside of the clay. Usually I do two. And the thumb is out. The thumb is not part of the party. Your fingers go in. You're bracing with this hand and you drag open your ball of clay. You only want to open your ball of clay about a two inches, okay? So my ball of clay is only open about that wide in the middle. If I open it too far, I'll tear off my little donut ring of clay and I'll lose my whole pot. So just so you get a nice idea of what that should look like on the inside once you spread your floor, this is about what the inside should look like. You should have a little underhang under your ball of clay. Your floor should really only be open about two inches across the interior. You want to definitely have your ball of clay kind of hook under. If you're throwing and you've opened your ball of clay and it's winged out like that into a ball, into a bowl shape, you should close it back up a little bit because you're gonna be fighting with that clay and it'll start to go out rather than go up into the mug shape that we need. Okay, so I'm back. I've opened my ball of clay. This is what the interior looks like two inches open across the bottom, a half an inch of thickness for the floor. And you'll notice that this is kind of bubbled out a little bit. I like to take my clay and lean it in, squeeze it in a little bit before I make my first pull. That way I can continue to keep my clay moving straight up rather than flaring out. So to pull up my ball of clay, once I have opened it, it's centered, I'm ready to make a pull, I slow my wheel down just a little bit, I add water to the clay, and my left hand, which has been on the left hand side this whole time, shifts. My left hand goes inside the clay and my, right, my left thumb comes on the outside of the clay, so I form this pinchy shape, okay, with my left hand, my pinchy claw. Now my right hand slides alongside my left hand, and it helps to create a stable squeezing system to pull my clay up. So my left hand goes inside, 
I wrap my thumb, my fingertips around my left thumb and I'm going to gently squeeze the clay and aim straight for the ceiling. You don't have to make a monster pull right away. We just kind of want to thin out the walls a little bit. Now I'm gonna go back in, start from the bottom again, squeeze from the bottom, and I'm pushing in way more with this outside hand than I'm pushing out with this hand. If I push out really firmly with my left hand, my piece will flare open. When I get to the top, I always compress my lip, so I hold my clay on either side, and I press down very gently on the rim. You will notice that many potters, many students like to hold their wet sponge in their right hand as they're pulling up. This is very common, and what it does is it imparts moisture as you're pulling up, and it also kind of deadens the nervous feeling in your fingertips of the gritty clay, making it easier for you to pull up and just get through it. So I'm gonna squeeze again from the bottom, holding my sponge in my hand, pressing up firmly, taking my time as I raise up my cylinder, and then I pull my clay up into this nice mug shape. I'm gonna get the water out of the bottom and then I have to determine how thick this is. Do I need to do another pull to thin it out? Do I need to come back in and do a lighter touch to straighten this? I think I might. Compress my lip again. And once I like the shape and I've made a cylinder, I can stop. I can undercut my clay with my wooden stick where I hold it like a pencil and I draw a line along the bottom to make a nice clean bottom. I can take my needle tool and draw under that ring, stop my wheel, and remove the clay. And then I'm gonna cut this in half so we can see the interior. One thing that I wanna point out to you is that you'll notice that as I'm throwing and pulling the clay up, I am always working at what is four o'clock. If this is noon and this is six back here, I always throw at four o'clock. That's the natural hand position. cut my ball of clay and I can see here that I have nice even wall, nice even thickness. It's nice and straight on the bottom and that it's the walls are even and I pulled all the thick clay out of the bottom and pulled it up into the wall of the pot.